So, Father, bless this word. I pray that it makes sense. We just open up the heavens in the name of Jesus. All right. Say what if. What if what if the number one thing we should have been taught and that we should know and understand we don't understand it at all. We've not been told. We don't have a recollection of it. What if I am a product and they can put they can put this up as much as they like. What if I'm a product of what I've learned, what I've experienced? Hmm? What if the life I have now was a choice I made and I didn't even know I was making the choice? Because I make my choices from what appears in front of me. That's why I have to go places I've never been and experience things I've never experienced so that I know it's possible. Dr. Monroe said, get on the plane with me and fly to Chicago. I said, I can't fly. We're in Tulsa, Dr. Monroe. He's blowing my mind. He, I said, we're in Tulsa. I got a car here. I drove my wife. He said, that's fine. He said, let's you get your wife a plane ticket to fly to Omaha. You fly with me to Chicago. We'll bring you back to Tulsa. You get in your car and drive home. I'm, it took me an hour just to understand what he just said. Because in my head, what am I asking? Who does that? <laughs> Who does that? I mean, this doesn't make sense. What are you talking about? Fly on a plane. And we're just going to go there. And then we're going to come back. I get in my car. Tonight. Then we're going to do that tonight. It made no sense to me. I was ignorant. So in the plane, he said, call your wife. I said, we can't make phone calls from a plane. It interrupts with the navigational system. He said, they're fooling you. They just don't want you preoccupied if there's a crash. I called my wife from the plane. I said, girl, I'm on the plane calling you. And he said to me, he said, I have to expose you to things because you're ignorant. He wasn't cursing me. He was simply saying, you think everybody lives like you live. Do you understand that just a few miles from here, Nobody is worried about the light bill. They don't even think about it. Just a few miles from here, somebody has a college student in college and the tuition is $60,000 a year and they just write the check. Everybody isn't having the experience we're having. And God does not discriminate. It's just when you don't know, you can't have it. We have a friend that owns a Korean restaurant in Omaha. And when we go there, when we go there, we say, we want this, we want that, and we want this, and we want some kimchi. And they say, none of what you ordered is on the list up there. It's not on the menu. We said, we know. <laughs> we know it's not on the menu. She Korean. There's some kimchi around here somewhere. Okay. But because we know her and we know she's Korean, we know what's available that's not on the menu. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. There's stuff God has for you. Ain't no preacher told you. It's not. No eye has seen or hear has heard what God has prepared for those who walk up right before him. So we have to start imagining the I am of God has to wake up in us that everything he is, I am right now, right here. And that's the kingdom. <laughs> okay, so watch this. Here are these principles we deal with, and I hope this is okay, Pastor. Here are these principles we deal with. We, 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 we deal with these principles all the time. And I, I sat in church and I heard all of them and they just didn't make sense to me. Uh, 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 God is in control. And every time they get that, my worst whoopings, the worst whoopings I ever got, maybe I, I was born in church on the pew. The worst whoopings I ever got is when they would say God is in control. So I would ask my mama, daddy, and the deacons, when my parents were gone. I said, if God is in control, why are people dying? If God is in control, why are we poor? I learned that God is not in control. If God was really in control, some stuff would not be happening. Then they would say, you know, the devil's in control. The devil's doing stuff. 
If the devil was in control, would you be sitting here? <laughs> so he is not in control either. <laughs> so the third principle is neither God nor the devil is in control. I'm really in control of my own life because it depends on what I know about him. He created for six days and sat down. Everything for my life has already been created. I don't have to pray all night. I don't have to fast for it. I don't have to do it for it. I just got to know and understand it exists and then receive it. Is that okay? You sure? So he's done everything. So now we make these choices from what we know. Say ignorance. We can only make choices from what we know. And if we don't know something, we start to make wrong choices. We start to get a life we don't deserve because we don't know. We simply don't know. I can't tell you, and I would ask the ministers in the room, when you're going to talk to people and you try to talk to them about the kingdom, how often are you rejected? They don't want to hear anything about the kingdom. <laughs> they don't want to hear anything about the kingdom. So I usually do this. I, they say, well, what's the kingdom? Is that a new gospel? I'm like, uh, no, that's Genesis 2 gospel. <laughs> That's dominion gospel. That's God created you out of him gospel. It is the oldest gospel. It's the oldest good news. And by the way, Jesus dying on the cross is not good news. That's the means to get us good news. And the good news is that we can be restored to our calling, to our dominion. They reject it. Do you know the kingdom is mentioned 333 times in the New Testament? Do you know how many times be born again is mentioned in the New Testament? Twice. In one conversation with an old man that was struggling. You must be born again. How am I going to be born again? <laughs> Wasn't nobody there except John to write it down. He never preached that in public, be born again. But he did say this, the kingdom of heaven is like. <laughs> the kingdom of heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven. Maybe we should just do this. Let me do this. I might not get anywhere else. Matthew 16, 11. Can y'all look that up? Or is it 11, 16? We'll find out in a minute. <laughs> Matthew eleven sixteen. 16. Anybody have it? Here, here, here is, here's the conversation. Now, young people, listen to me now. Listen to me. They're talking to Jesus. And they want to know one thing. What shall I like in this generation? Jesus answered the question. The question is, what is this generation like? What's it like? Describe it from your eyes, Jesus. Listen to what he says now. It is like what? <laughs> Children doing what? And doing what? Keep reading. Next verse. Oh, saying. <laughs> we have played the flute for you and you have not danced. We mourn to you, and you, okay, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. For John came neither nor drinking, and he has a demon. He not eating nor drinking. But, but the son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom, we know if you're wise, if your children are living right. It's the only way we can tell. So, what's this generation like? Here's my question to you. How many of you have kids? How many of you have seen other people's kids? 
Have you ever seen other people's little children at the bank? Have you seen other people's children at the grocery store? What is it like? Come on, talk to me. What's it like? You can't do business with children. Okay. Children in the places of transfer. Children don't know what's happening. A mom is in the bank and I'm watching this whole thing. She has three children. She's trying to get a loan to get a car so she can go to work and help her kids. I'm at the bank just getting some money. She's there. Her kids are in the water fountain. They're ripping up magazines and she's telling them, please sit down. They don't understand that mama is in a place of transfer. It's over their heads. It's over their heads. They can't conceive that something big is happening. They're playing kid games. Whose church is bigger than other? Our musicians are better than you. They got the cooties over there at that church. I just like our musician. I don't like that. Can you stand, can't stand that, Pastor? We're playing children's games while power is shifting over our heads. They introduced me in the UN. My friend introduced me. He said, he's a pastor. He said, he's a pastor. What's he doing here? He says, my, he's, he's one of my number one investors. He's a business partner. And they wanted to know, the Bank of Nova Scotia, the president is in the room. You're a pastor and you invest? I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? He said, I don't think I've met one. I said, we're going to create many of them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, don't play with me now. Well, we get 10, 12%. Ain't nobody want no 10, 12% no more. Money is moving over our heads. People are buying property in your city right now. But until we wake up and stop being children, y'all know children. You ever play patty cake? While we're playing patty cake, People are making money over our head, making deals, getting their children involved in things. They're operating in this city. There's a meeting. There's a meeting at four in the morning every Monday to decide how much you're going to pay for your rent. <laughs> and they're together. When you show up and the Chevrolet dealer and the, the, the Buick dealer and the Ford dealer, they're all got It's a price war. Ain't no price war. They met this morning to decide what they were going to do. <laughs> but it's over our heads because we're not taught all the time that we should be controlling a city. When the righteous rule, the people re. Joyce. So there has to come a time where the ignorance goes away. And we understand that we're in places where power is shifting. Say shifting. Shifting, 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 shifting. We have to understand we're in a place where power is shifting. Uh, 2 Kings 6 and 2 Kings 7, we ought to have to understand that a king doesn't know power shifting. The man on his hand he's leaning doesn't know power shifting. So eventually God has to use some lepers. Because nobody understands what's going on. This is not about starving a city. This is not about food. This is about the powers that are changing. And God uses four lepers who don't even know what's going on either, but they have the sense just to do something. Well, if we're going to die, we're going to die here. We might as well die quick over there in the enemy's camp. And God puts a microphone to their feet as they're crawling through the sand, and the Assyrians hear a mighty army. God shifts everything with people who have a sense. Come on, would you say with me? There's got to be something more. There's got to be something else. There's got to there's got to be something bigger than what we're experiencing. And you don't always have to leave to experience it. Isaac, I want you to stay here. I told you to stay in Gerar. You're going to plant and I'm going to give you a hundredfold right where you are. All of us can't leave a city to go to hell. 
I hope I'm okay. Sit me down when I'm too much. Because some people can't get out. They can't leave. So Isaac, you can't leave. I'm going to show you how to restore every well your father dug. It don't matter. It don't. It don't matter. I'm going to show you how to. I'm going to show you how to redig what your daddy left. Well, they put dirt and meat in it. There's no water. There's always water there. Our fathers weren't stupid. Your granddaddy wasn't stupid. They knew what they were doing. They built some stuff. They opened some doors. They cracked open some ceilings. They broke some glass. They opened. They dug some things out. And people say it's stuffed up. It's not stuffed up. It's still there. It's still there. And we, okay, I'm way off. But we have to be the ones to go after it. But we don't know. We don't even know it's ours. We don't know, and I, I know I'm in, I'm in a spiritual place. I don't know how the Church of God thinks about this, but I, I, you know, I went to see Rafiki last night, the prophet in the Lion King. <laughs> Sorry. Rafiki said, you don't even know who you are. <laughs> so when I walk in someplace, I have to understand the difference between what Moses said about himself and what God said about himself. Moses asked the question, who am I? that you should use me. God said in the next sentence, I am going with you. Who am I? Mm -mm, wrong question. Who is the I am that's going with you? Because the I am in you tells you who you are. Whatever I am is, I is. <laughs> Whatever I am can do, I can do. Whatever I am can have, I can have. Are you saying you're God? Yes, yeah, what I just said. Are your children your children? Or did they come from a snake? Are they your children? Or did they come from a cow? Are your children you? They're you. They got your DNA. They got your character. They got your image. I came out of him. What else could I be but God? Do you pray all day about something? No. God don't pray all day. Jesus said these words. Okay. Okay. Jesus said these words. They said, why won't your disciples fast and pray? He said, why would they fast and pray? When I'm here, it's a party time. We ain't got no time to be fasting and praying. I'm with them. If you know I am is with you, you wake up in the morning, kiss yourself, kiss God. When you love yourself, you love him. You walk out your house, you do everything God's called you to do. You don't need no money in your pocket. You don't need nobody to love you. You don't need anybody to give you anything. You own everything you walk on. And that's Bible. But we don't. Can I read something to you? Satan rules your life only in the areas where you're ignorant. If you don't know, pennies turn into nickels and nickels to dimes and dimes to quarters and quarters to dollars and dollars to hundred dollars, hundred dollars to thousand, thousands to tens of thousands, hundred thousand, and million. If you don't understand that, you give him permission to rule your life and money. If you don't know that God gave you a wife to help you, she is your help. Meat for you. She's not a help meat. She's help meat for you. She's help equivalent to you. She's help alongside you. You're both anointed. She's not lower than you. Came with the curse. We, we get rid of everything else with the curse except free and women. <laughs> I don't want to say that. 
Everything in the curse, we get rid of. That's curse. We're not going to do that. But women, submit to your husband. That's part of the curse. The first thing you do when you get married, you realize your wife is just as powerful, just as anointed as you. She's the same. She just has different responsibilities. You give the seed, she multiplies it. I'm way off now. <laughs> the kingdom releases us from the devil's grip because we're no longer ignorant. But when we don't know, we fall prey to everything else. Here's a really important scripture. I'm just going to get to it. Is that all right? Let's go to the scripture we read all the time. We read it all the time. Hosea 4. <laughs> I wanna, can I talk to you about what's going on? Because it's not what we think. <clears throat> it's not what we think. Hosea 4, and 1 says, Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. What did he say? <clears throat> there is no truth. There's no mercy and no knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying, killing and stealing, committing adultery, they break all restraints with bloodshed upon bloodshed. Third verse, therefore, the land will mourn. Everyone who dwells there will waste away <clears throat> with the beast of the field and the birds of the air. Even the fish of the sea will be taken away. Watch now. Now let no man contend or rebuke another for your people are like those who contend with the priests. Therefore, you shall stumble in the day and your prophets will also stumble with you in the night and I will destroy your mother. Such a natural mother. It is the environment which gives you birth and nurtures you. <clears throat> It'll have to be destroyed. We, we together? Huh? We're, we're in uh, Hosea 4. Yeah, Hosea 4, 1 through 5. Now, here's the verse we quote. My people, my people are not destroyed because they don't dance enough. My people are not destroyed because they don't come to church. My people are destroyed because they don't know. My sister reminded me last week, you know, when you have a mom's remember everything. She remembers stories I got because they were trying to put me on the short bus as a little boy. <laughs> so I, this stuff, I don't, you know, and teacher after teacher would say, you know, you're underdeveloped. You, you, you really belong in those classes. I had teachers who said, and she was reminding me that I would have teachers say to my face, you're not going to develop into anything. We don't know why you're struggling with this. I said, really? She said, yeah. This is how, she was a school teacher in the same district. So she would remind me, she'd ask me, how are you doing at school? I didn't know what she was saying. You know, I'm a C minus student, having a hard time reading, doing all this stuff. I hear a word them teacher said. Didn't bother me not now a bit, sorry. I know I'm in Michigan. <laughs> didn't bother me at all. <laughs> then one teacher said to me, you'll never develop, you just go get a trade. I'm getting ready to graduate. And they said I'd never graduate. I'm getting ready to graduate. Just go learn a trade. I said, I'm going to college. I said, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going, to, I'm going to have a lot of money. I'm going to do well. She says, you need to go learn a trade. I said, I'm going to college. She said, you don't have a GPA to go, uh, ACT to go. I said, what does that have to do with anything? I saw myself in college. <laughs> she said, you were just like, none of it mattered to you. I said, it doesn't. It still doesn't. Nobody has the right to rule your life That's right. That's right. Amen. except God and you. That's right. Everybody's telling you stuff you can't do, places you can't go, stuff you can't have. They don't know what you can have. 
It's the knowledge we have to gain. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, here it is now. I'm going to read it, then I'm going to take you through it. Is that okay? Yeah. For real? Yeah. Okay. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Watch this now. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of oh my God, I also will forget your children. Let me tell you what's happening right now. What's happening right now is this verse. This one right here. We are destroyed. We're not being destroyed because people think we got a bad president. We're not being destroyed. We're not being destroyed because we live in a horrible world. None of that is destroying us. We're being destroyed because we don't understand who we are. And the second phrase says this. Because you have rejected knowledge. How do you reject knowledge? Okay, I'm from Mississippi. Where are your people from? Mississippi, Alabama, right? Y'all up here in Flint, but y'all just as country as we are down there. <laughs> y'all ain't fooling nobody. So in Mississippi, this is how we do it, Doc. When you walk in our house, we don't care if you ate. We don't care where you've been. We say, have some food. And if you already ate, We'll take that paper plate, get some tinfoil we done washed and reused, and wrap it up over that and send you out of the house with it. Because we didn't ask you. Now, if you come to our house, y'all don't do that here? We would send leftovers home in old bread uh, bags. You can only reject something that's been offered to you. And God is saying, I've been trying to tell you who you are and you've been rejecting it. In Numbers 13, it's all over the Bible, folks. In Numbers 13, God told, God told Moses, I want to show you who I am. Burning bush. Then he says, go get my people, bring them back here so they can see who I am because I want to make them kings and priests. I want to restore them to who they were in Genesis. Is this too much? I want to restore them to kings and priests. When by the time Moses got back with two million people, God was El at first. He shows up. He's El Elyon. The whole mountain's on fire. God's like, I ain't in no bush, boy. I'm in the whole mountain. I'm in charge of the sky, the thunder and lightning. Them people told, them people told Moses, look, you go up there and talk to him. <laughs> We ain't going up there. <laughs> Moses said, we brought you, listen, we brought you here so that you could become who you were before slavery. They rejected it. We don't want to be that. You go talk to him and you come down here and tell us what he said. Moses said, I'll be John Brown. I done done all this to bring you here and you don't want to be a king now. You just want to live on the earth and have other people tell you what to do. Tell you where to live. Tell you how to be educated. Tell you what to eat, what to drive, where to travel. They said to Moses, we want to be like the other people. We want a king to fight for us. We want a king to give us food. We want a king to give us land. Moses said, you don't need all that. God wants you to be a king unto yourself. They did not want it. Pastor, I'm coming to church. Sing some songs now. Make me happy now. Make me happy on Sunday. Make me happy. Get a choir up there and some musicians. We don't care how much you got to pay them. We need to be happy. We need to get in that pulpit now and make us happy for the two hours we at church. And they leave church. And before the football game on Sunday night, they are back in the world of accepting everything except who they are in God. Y'all got 20 more minutes for me? You have rejected knowledge. It gets worse. 
Once you reject who you know who you are, he has to reject you. You have rejected knowledge. So now I can't let you be a priest for me. That's what it says. I can't let you represent me. I can't let you talk to people. I can't give you the stuff I want to give you. I can't open the doors. Okay. I go a lot of places, folks. And I hear people preach, and they got thousands in the seat. And I'm sitting there saying, what, 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 what is he saying? That makes absolutely no sense. People are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. God is in control of your life. Yeah. I'm like, no, he ain't. Uh, 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 get your life right. Jesus is coming soon. He ain't coming. According to Matthew 24, 14, he's not coming to people who have heard the kingdom. So I rejected you. Now you can't represent me. A lot of things you're waiting for from God have already been given to you. You just have to accept them. <laughs> if you don't accept them, he can't give them to you. And now everything is hung up. Your life, your relationships, your money. I don't want to stay in Omaha. And I told God for years, I don't want to stay. I don't want to stay. I want to go southeast. I want to go. I want to go. I want to go. I want to go. And God finally said to me, you can go. You can go. I said, praise the Lord. The next morning, he finished his sentence. <laughs> you can go, dot, dot, dot. But everything I have for you is here. Assignment is key. You rejected knowledge, I will reject you. And now I got to do something I don't want to do, but I have to. I have to reject your children. Um, I usually do an example, but I will, I'll spare you that tonight. But if, I, but if I had grandma stand here and her daughter stand here and the granddaughter stand here, so I got, I got grandma, grandma gave birth to this daughter, this daughter gave birth to that daughter. Can you see him standing here? Yeah. Okay. Grandma didn't know much about God and hadn't heard the revelation of the kingdom. Hmm? Now, you learn this principle. You learn, educators know, you learn 50 to 65% of what you hear. But you learn 65 to 85% of what you teach. At the end of the day, you still don't learn 100% unless you're continual learning. Grandma knows nothing about the kingdom. She teaches her daughter everything she knows. What does the daughter know? <laughs> she knows less than grandma about the kingdom. She's still cutting off the end of the ham to right, fit it in a right, pan right. to cook. <clears throat> now mom teaches daughter everything she knows. What does, what does granddaughter know? Less than grandma. Generational curses don't come from the devil. Generational curses are created by passing ignorance to the next generation. The devil is on my track. I'm just trying to make it in. Why in heaven's name would I pass that on to my children? My daddy said money doesn't grow on trees while he was cutting down a tree and getting paid to do it. 
I'm going to go outside. That went right over your head. <clears throat> Money don't grow on trees. He's telling me this as a little boy while he's cutting down a tree and the lady paid him to cut it down. <laughs> the tree is the money. The leaves are the money. The branches are the money. The whole tree is money. Money grows on trees. So guess what I tell my children? Money's everywhere. You're swimming in it. It's all around you. Whenever you need it, it'll be there. I, tell, I told my children this this week. Spend money like it's a dry leaf and you have a billion acres full of trees. Let me help you. Money only shows up in areas where you need it and you expect it to be there. Go down and just pick up a fish out the sea. It's going to have enough money for taxes for you and me. You never work for money. <laughs> you work for him. And money comes to you wherever you are. So now our children are forgotten. And have less. Do, do, you, do you understand that where we are right now in a nation, that if we were just talking about church, church is a trillion dollar economy. I'm not even talking about the Catholic church. Everybody except that. We are a trillion dollar economy. Churches. And less than one half of 1% of it stays with our people. We will work on our jobs and never spend money with one another. <laughs> we'll never bless one another. Our money doesn't cycle in our own community. Mm -mm, I don't want Brother Bob to be rich. Well, Joe is getting rich. He don't even like you. I'm, I'm trying to understand people. We buy stuff from people who hate us. It's ignorance giving birth to triplets. Tell me what I said, mama. She's like, boy, what are you talking about? <laughs> she, the look on her face was, oh, Lord Jesus. Pastor, who you got up in here? It, it, <laughs> I know. I know. I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> it's the reproduction of our own ignorance to the third degree. And it eventually multiplies so big, it's like roaches in Mississippi. We can't exterminate them. All we need is knowledge. When God wants something, he first decides, he first decides why he wants it, yes. not what he wants. Why? Why am I creating this man? Why? Then he decides what? Then he decides what material to get it from. Then he speaks to the material he wants it from. And out of that material comes what he wants. Once he sees what he wants, he says, that's what I wanted, or that's good. What'd I say? God decides <laughs> why he wants something. Why? Why? Then he decides what's it, what he wants, because it answers the why. Then he decides where he's going to get it from. Then he talks to where he's going to get it from and tell where he's going to get it from to give it to him. 
once he gets it and sees what he wanted, he says, this is good. So God decides, God decides that it's dark. That's why. So what does he want? Light. <laughs> what does he want it from? The firmament. So he says to the firmament, let there be light. Once the lights turn on, he says, that's good. He wants animals to roam. He decides why he wants them. Then he decides what he wants, animals. He decides where he wants them from, the ground. He speaks to the ground. What comes out of the ground? Animals. <laughs> when he sees the animals, he says, he wants fish. <laughs> he speaks to what? Fish come out of the water, he says. Huh? So everything he created, he knew what he wanted. He called it and he received it. He said, it's good. Here's my story. I'm sitting with my aunt, Louisiana. She had a dog and a cat living outside. Dog and a cat. She called the dog. And the cat showed up, jumped up in her lap. She called the dog. The cat came, jumped in her lap. She's stroking the cat and still talking to us. I'm a little boy, but something hit my head. Why is my aunt stroking the cat? She didn't call the cat. She called the dog. Why are people satisfied stroking cats when you call the dog? You know this ain't the life you wanted. You know it. Why are we stroking this cat? Keep having the same conversation. Same old people. Talk about the same thing. Oh, it's like, do what we do. Scat cat, I did not call you. I called the dog. Where, where is the dog? Don't choke, mother. Don't choke, boss. Where is the dog in my life? Where we shouldn't talk to Jesus like that. We shouldn't treat Jesus like that. In Luke 18, there was a woman that showed up and Jesus tell the story. That man told that woman, that man told, told that woman, he said, I ain't giving you nothing. She said, I ain't leaving then. If you don't give it to me, because this life I got right here, this ain't the life you told me I could have. Something has got to move. I didn't call the cat. I called the dog. Are you unsatisfied? Yes, I am. He said he would give me the length of my days and satisfy me with the fruit of the land. If you don't lie, something's going on in my head or in my heart. And I need to fix this. I can't be hanging around here in religion talking about I'm going to go to heaven one day. Listen, man, if you were skinny and happily married and rich, would you want to go to heaven? A man said to me, I can't kill my wife, so I'm just hanging out for heaven. I'm like, dude, you can't, li you can't live the rest of your life hating your wife. This don't make sense. <laughs> Just right. I can't kill her. So God, come soon, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Because I want you to know who you are. This is how the kingdom works. If God, if God creates something, if he creates a star out of the firmament, what must that star do to stay alive? In the environment. What happens to the star when it dies? It just goes back to where it came from. Mm. Is what is in the firmament the same stuff that's in the star? Are they the same? 
If a fish is created in the water, how does it stay alive? You don't have to kill it. All you have to do is take it out. What happens to the fish when it dies? Goes back to the water. Am I making sense? When God wanted you, (laughs) why did he want you? He, he wanted, according to the Bible, he wanted sons, not slaves. He don't want no church members. He wants sons and daughters who come together to be ecclesia in church. If we're going to stay alive, where must we do it? In God. As soon as I'm separated from him, I'm dead. When I die, where do I go? Back to him. So if when he made firmament, he spoke stars, he spoke to the firmament. When he made animals, he spoke to the ground. When he made plants, he spoke to the ground. When he wanted fish, he spoke to the water. Who did he speak to to make you? Himself. So what is in God? Everything. And then he made you out of him. In his image, and likeness. So who are you? <laughs> Can't even say it, can you? <laughs> I know it. I know it. You're like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who I am. Uh, go to Psalm 82 and I'll be done. It doesn't make any sense for us to start talking about what we can do in our city with our, with our life and with our families if we don't understand this. Because this is the basis of the kingdom. This is, this is kingdom 101. Who are you? We have to get this straight. Can we get it straight? Y'all sure? Put on your big boy pants right now. No. We there? Psalms 82. What does the first verse say? I think it's first verse. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. Let's read it together. We're going to go through several verses. Y'all with me? Thank you so much. Let's read together. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. What does he say? How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Think about this. Selah. Come on. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Come on, America. Come on, America. Deliver the poor and needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in ignorance. (laughs) All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Watch this this now. I said you are God's and All of you are. I said, you are God. Oh, Lord, he's in heresy. How people read the Bible and say it's heresy? Well, I need a New Testament scripture. That's in the Old Testament. (laughs) John 10, 35. You have to get this straight. We have to get this straight. We we, we have to get this straight. Uh, go Go up a verse. Any weird stuff I say, it's it's on it's on it's on pastor here. He can straighten it out. <laughs> oh, you gotta you gotta go up. Go go up a couple more. It's good. 
Go up to 32. What's that? Okay. Jesus says, what did they say in 31? <laughs> Ice cream on me, man. <laughs> then the Jews, watch him now. The Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, many good works, read it, many good works are shown from my father. For which of these works, if you're going to kill me, just tell me. I ain't got no problem with you killing me. Just tell me why you're killing me. The Jews answered him saying, watch this, for a good work, we're not stoning you. We ain't stoning you because you healed nobody. We ain't stoning you because you raised the dead. You did something worse. But for blasphemy. Why? Read it loud. Because you, being a man, make yourself God. That's our problem with you. You say you're God. This is blasphemy. <laughs> Watch this, though. Jesus answered them. <laughs> is it not written? In your law, that I said, you are God. This is Jesus. This is Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> this ain't no Paul. This ain't no John. This is Jesus himself. Come on, Jesus. This is him talking. It's in red. Now watch this. Now watch what he says. Because he, he want to talk to your bishop now. He want to talk to your apostle, your denomination, your people with the robes and the hats that look like Catholic and the collars around their neck and the big rings you kiss. Then he says, if, read it, you read it. If he called them gods to whom the and the scripture I don't care who told you this is a heresy. Jesus said Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus, gangster, bad. Jesus, Jesus, super fly. Jesus, Superman. Jesus, Wakanda. Jesus is like everybody. No, 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 no. G G watch what Jesus. G okay. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, now, didn't I say? Watch it now. Didn't I say back in Psalm 82 that you're God's? Hold up. You mean to tell me you standing here and you were in Psalm 82 at the same time? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You telling me you said it then in Genesis and in Psalm and now you standing in front of us and you telling us you're not just God but you are eternal? Jesus said, yes, I am. And I'm telling you, you were born and made in my image and my likeness. That means you're like me. Little G now. Don't get big headed. You're not big G. You're little G now. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> you're, the, you're, you're, you're the shadow, the likeness. You're the image of me. That's who you are. And here's the problem with our world. Can I tell you the problem with our world? For the earth groans. And moans, waiting for the manif these, the manifestation of the sons of God. The grass won't grow. Cities are dying. People can't find water to drink because we're waiting for the sons of God who know who they are. Jos Josiah does it this way. Y'all don't know Josiah. You just... To him, that means I'm here. I'm, I'm just here. That's their son. Just like, I said, Josiah, what's that? He said, I'm here. I'm just, I'm just here. You got to deal with me. The birds are asking, where are these sons? Can, can I tell you what's happening in Africa? I'm, I'm, I'm done, babe. It's too much. We're, we're in Africa, East and West Africa. 
Now I'm sitting in the UN. I'm telling you people, in the UN and in Africa, the truth has just come out. The biggest aquifers of water on the African continent. Yeah. We are running out of space on the earth. That's why everybody's trying to go to the moon. Listen to me now. But they've just let the cat out of the bag that Africa has enough space for everybody. Africa has enough water for everybody. Africa has enough sun that we don't even need electricity on the earth. We don't need power stations. Okay. Okay. The earth needs nothing. So now all the nations of the world, these bankers are standing up there talking. And I just had to let them know, no, we own, we, we own land in several African nations. Don't be trying to play us now. There's enough water in the ground in Africa to water every person on the earth forever. Wow. Wow. Amen. wow. And we sitting up in cities where babies are dying of lead poisoning. And we praying. <laughs> We've got to start thinking now. We need to start manif- Would you do me a favor? And I'm done tonight. Would you do me a favor? Weirdest altar call you ever had. We, we don't need to come to Jesus no more. We need to come to ourselves. Because <laughs> Jesus is already in you. I'm not Cardin Pearson. I'm not saying you already saved. I'm saying he's already in you. We need to come to ourselves. Would you just ask one person sitting next to you? And if they're not sitting next to you, go find them. And just ask them, when are you going to show up? When are you going to show up? When, when are you going to show up? When are you going to show up on the earth? I mean the real you. The real you. That little girl at 7, 8, 12 used to dream about owning stuff. Used to dream about ruling the world. When are you going to show up? When is the real you going to stand up and say, I'm here to live? Not just here to get by. Not just here to exist. Not just here to hang out. I'm here to do some big things. When will you, son of God, show up on the earth? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Everybody get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Go find somebody and ask them, when are you going to show up? 